Hey guys, another idea of fear book back to another video. In this video, we added five time slaps and two time slaps game passes. Since I own them both, if I slap this guy, I get seven slaps. I also added an admin panel to give yourself slaps or take away slaps. And only admins that you choose have access to this panel, as well as a complete revamp of the data store to prevent data loss. Um Bruh. I'm not really sure that this is supposed to happen. As well as a bug where if you died while your ability cooldown was going on, your ability will not break. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this tutorial. See you. Alright, as you can see, I'm in our game here, and the first thing we need to do is actually create two times and five times slap game passes. So to do this, we can go to the Roblox website and then click on the Create tab on the top of the screen. We can go ahead and find our game and click this little gearbox and click Create Pass. We're going to go ahead and choose an image. So I'll just choose this one right here. And I can go ahead and name it two times slaps and set the description of it to be gives you twice the slaps. You can click Preview and then click Verify Upload. Then create a game pass for five times slaps as well. So once you have your game passes, you can click on the gear box right here and click configure. Then you're gonna go to sales, click item for sale, and set your price. So let's just do three Robux. And then do the same thing for the other game pass as well. So once you have created your game passes, you're gonna go back to Roblox Studio. You're gonna click on service storage and open up the hands folder. Then you can get any glove. I'm gonna start with the default glove. Open up the hitbox and the hit handler. And we're gonna script the game passes. So we can start by making some variables. So we can create a variable for marketplace service. So we can do local marketplace service is going to be equal to game colon get service. And we're gonna get marketplace service. And then we can set a variable for the game passes. So local times two is going to be equal to, and we're just gonna leave it blank for now. And then we can do local times five is gonna be equal to blank for now again. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to roblox and we're gonna click on the twice the snaps game pass now up here you can see this random batch of numbers that's called the asset id you're gonna copy this and then we can go back to roblox and we're gonna paste it right here for the two time slaps variable why did rockstar Bruh. games launcher just open hello now we can get the five time slaps asset id as well and then just paste it right here so what we can do is down here we're just gonna delete this line we can just go ahead and delete this and we're gonna create an if statement so we're gonna do if marketplace service colon user owns game pass to sync we can do player dot user id comma times two which is this variable we created up here and then we can do and ms colon user owns game pass to sync player dot user id comma times five then so if they owe both the two times and five times slap game passes of course we're gonna give them seven slaps so we can do player dot leader stats dot slaps dot value equals to player dot leader stats dot slaps dot value we can do plus seven so now we're gonna check if they only own the two times slap game pass so we can do else if and then we can just copy this area right here so everything after the if statement in this line they can copy it and paste it right here and we're after this and here we're just gonna add in a not so we're checking if they only own the two time slap game pass we can go ahead and copy this line and paste it right here and just give them two slaps instead of seven and then we can copy then we can copy this again paste it down here and now what we're gonna do we're just gonna swap out these two variables so we can do times five right here and times two right here. So now we're just checking if they only own the five time slap game pass. And if they do, we're going to give them five slaps. And if they don't own any of those game passes, so we can do else, we're just gonna give them one slap. So now if I were to play it. So in the game here, if I were to slap a dummy with the glove I just coded, which is the default glove, you can see I have 104,436 slaps right now. Now I have 104,443. As you can see, I gained seven times the slaps since I own both of the game passes. And if I were to only own one of them, I would get either five times or two times slaps. And if I own none of the game passes, I would get one slap. So now we just need to add these changes to all of our gloves. 
As you can see, I have now applied these changes to all of the scripts, so now all of the gloves are compatible with the game passes. So the next thing we can do is we're going to create a GUI, that's going to be our admin panel, to give ourselves slaps and take away slaps. So in starter GUI, we can add in a screen GUI, and we can go ahead and name it to admin panel, and we can just go ahead and add in a frame and customize it. All right, so I made this simple panel with a few buttons that either give you slaps or take away slaps. And before we code these buttons, we need to make a script that makes sure that only admins have access to this GUI. So in the mainframe, we can add in a local script and we can go ahead and rename it to admins only. Actually, we don't want it in the mainframe. We want it in the admin panel itself. So let's move it into the admin panel. And the first thing we're gonna do is disable the GUI so players can't see it. So I can do script.parent.enabled equals to false. So now we're gonna create a table for the admins that can see it. So we can do local admin IDs. This is going to be equal to pointy brackets. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a table of admins that can access this GUI. So we're gonna go to Roblox again, and you're gonna go to your admins profile or your own profile. So I have myself right here, and I of course want to be an admin. What you're gonna do is you're gonna get their asset ID. So you can look at the top of the screen at the link. You're gonna see this batch of numbers. You can right click and click copy. So back in Roblox, we can paste in this asset ID. And if that's your only admin, that's all you need to do. But if you have more admins, you're gonna add in a comma and you're gonna repeat the process. So I've gone ahead and added myself, my sister, and my friend. And actually, I'm just gonna write our names next to it just to keep it organized. And in case you're wondering, the reason why we have their asset ID and not their name is because players can change their name and we'll have to update the script, but asset IDs never change. So now we're going to create a variable for our player. So we can do local player equals to game dot players dot local player. And now we're going to create a for loop that loops through all these admins here. So we can do for i comma admins in pairs we can do admin ids do so we're getting our table here and we're looping through all of these ids here so now we're gonna check if our player who just joined the game is one of these people so we can do if player dot user id is equal equal to admins oops i just spell admins wrong oops then we're gonna enable the GUI for them so they can see the GUI. So you can do script.parent.enabled equals to true. And if you wanted to, we can even print player.name and then dot dot is an admin. So now if we play it, as you can see, I have this GUI available to me. And it says Netherite Dev is an admin, so it works. The only problem is these buttons do absolutely nothing. So we're gonna actually script these buttons. But before we do, we're gonna go to replicated storage and add in a remote event, which we can go ahead and rename give admin slaps. So this event is gonna be called whenever a button is clicked, which we'll get into more later. So we can just choose one of our buttons here. It doesn't matter which one. I'm gonna start with the first one. And we can add in a local script, which we can go ahead and rename to reward on click. So we can start by creating a variable for the remote event. So we can do local event equals game dot replicated storage on the wait for child and we can get give admin slaps. Then we're gonna set a variable for the reward. So local reward equals to, so this is my button that gives you five slaps. So I can do equals five. And if, the, and if you're coding a button that takes away slaps, you would simply do negative five or minus five. So then we can create a function. So then we can run a function whenever our button is clicked. So I can do script.parent.mouse button one click, colon connect function. And then we're gonna simply do event colon fire server. And we can fire the reward. So now we can copy this script and paste it into all our buttons. And then we're gonna go into every button and just change the reward value to match the button like that. 
So I've gone through all of the scripts and changed the reward value for each of them. But as you can see, if I were to click the buttons, nothing is happening. I'm not gaining any slaps or anything still. And in order to fix that, we're gonna add in a script to service script service, which we can go ahead and rename to admin rewards. So we can start by creating a variable for the event. So we can do local event is going to be equal to game dot replicated storage call the wafer child and we can get give admin slaps event again then we're going to run a function whenever the event is called so we can do event dot on server event call the connect function and we're going to set the parameters to player comma reward so we're getting the player that fired the event and how many slaps they're gaining or losing so we can do player dot leader stats dot slaps dot value is going to be equal to player dot leader stats dot slaps dot value plus reward so we're giving or taking away the slaps and we can even print out let's do player dot name dot dot and then has given themselves dot dot reward slaps so now if i were to play the game you can see if i click minus five i lose five slaps and it says netherite dev has given themselves a negative five slaps if i click plus five you can see i gain five slaps and all these other buttons work as well so it works perfectly now onto the data store so the next thing we're gonna do is improve the data store because it does work but there is a lot of data loss going on and we do not want data loss we're just gonna go ahead and completely delete our data store script and we're gonna add data store to our leader stats instead now i will admit i did not make this data store system this was made by gnome code be sure to check out his video on this he's honestly one of the best coding youtubers out there and he's really good at explaining things like a hundred times better than i am so if you want to learn about data store go definitely watch his video it is definitely the best data store video out there we can start by doing local data store is equal to game colon get service you can do data store service colon get data store and i believe we called it save slaps we can do local session data is going to be equal to an empty table so you can do equals pointy brackets and we can also delete this line right here that says slaps that value equals to zero we're gonna go ahead and delete this line right here now since this is not my script i'm just gonna play a time lapse of me scripting this and i will have the script in the description for you again if you want to actually learn about this definitely check out gnome code's video but anyway i will see you when i'm done scripting Alright guys, I'm done with no codes data store script. If you have multiple values that you need for your data store, you would simply add a comma after this, and then you would create another listing saying like, I don't know, kills or something, and then that value as well. And then you would add another one of these lines right here for the kills, so would make this like kills or something. And you would add another one of these functions for the kills as well. But that's only if you have a second value that you need the data store. And you can keep going for as many as you want. Like as you can see in this game I'm working on, I have tons of leader stats values that I need saving. And it all works with this script. But anyway, let's go ahead and test it out. So as you can see, I spawn in and my slaps were sadly reset. But if I were to gain more slaps and then stop the game, you can see it says data save for and then my user ID. And if I were to play it again, you can see that my data has loaded. And also, by the way, I'm probably going to get comments about this data store editor is running. I'll put that down here. That is for one of my plugins, so you don't need to worry about that. That's just for one of my plugins. So the very last thing we need to do is actually fix a bug. As you can see, if we spawn in our bus here and then die, or any ability for that matter, um, while the cooldown's still running, you can see I get this error here. It says attempt to index no visible, and I can no longer use the bus, and I'll have to leave and rejoin. So we're going to fix that. So we can go to starter player and starter player scripts and input handler. So we're going to start with our first 
ability here, which is our fart blast. We're, uh, under this, if cooldown is less than or equal to zero line, we're going to do if player dot character colon find first child and we can get humanoid. Actually, before we do that, we need a variable here for player. So we can do local player is equal to game dot players dot local player. All right. So then we can do this. So if player dot character colon find first child humanoid and player dot character colon find first child humanoid dot health is greater than greater than zero, then we're just going to copy this and paste it into here. And then under this break, we can do else. And then we're just going to add in another break. So then after this end here, we're going to do else if player dot character colon find first child humanoid and and player dot character colon find first child humanoid dot health is less than zero then or less than or equal to zero so this function runs only if they're alive when the cooldown ends and this function is gonna run whenever the player dies and what we can do is we can simply copy these lines right here and paste it in here. So it's just going to act like the time ran out. So we can go ahead and copy these lines right here and go ahead and paste it in all of our abilities. So now we're almost done, but we just need to do that same thing for the ability GUI as well. So this GUI right here for mobile players, we can open up the local script in there. And we can create a variable for the player. So we can do local player is equal to game dot players dot local player. And then we can just go ahead and paste in the same lines that we use for here, right here as well. And now the bug should be fixed if we were to go ahead and test it out. So let's see if I equip any glove and die while the ability hasn't run out yet. You can see as soon as I die, the ability disappears. When I go back, I can use the ability again, even though I died. And this should work with every ability you have. And if we were to go and test it out with phones as well, you can see if I equip a glove, you can see that it works exactly the same. If I were to die, the ability bar resets and it does not break. And then I can use the ability again. Anyways, guys, I do really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I know future editing me will not because I've been recording for an hour and 16 minutes at this point. So, um, please like and subscribe and I will see you guys later. Bye.